Well, you know, the, as I said in my exit seminar, the power to do good always is accompanied by the possibility to use that power in what will apparently be, it seemed to be, a positive side, but whose impact will eventually be negative. So there are some documented cases of, you know, aid agencies doing this and that. Of course, they mean they mean well. They think it is something that they will down to good, but the net effect is either a country becomes more backward, or it inhibits the growth of certain things or it just you know kind of boxes in certain initiatives so i think in the case of erie it will need to make sure that its its policies the kinds of challenges it responds to its research programs are very well thought out and that a little forward thinking is done in restructuring the organization and looking at how it will impact on its operations. And I did mention that a major factor of this in view of what is happening now within the CG system and the global food security issues will be governance. So managing this change process and managing the response of ERI to these challenges, either through a organizational structure that will fit the, the response that it, not, it needs, will be important. Um, and therefore, the, the factor of agility will have to be brought in without, of course, uh, changing the the way we structure our organization every month you know but some factor that will allow us to what i have always called walk in challenges challenges that are not anticipated but which come by your door just suddenly and unexpectedly and which you'll have to respond to because there's just you know in your view just important now some walk in challenges are not worth our while but there are going to be a number that i think will will have to anticipate and will come in by our way uh, one good example already is you know when the new secretary of agriculture of the philippines made the announcement we want to be self-sufficient in 2013 we didn't anticipate that you know and but that's that's the thinking and how do we respond to that you know? Um, so we, we just need to be sensitive to the fact that, that every time we make a move, we ask the question on whether the, is this enhancing our power to do good or will it eventually become a negative factor in Iris operations? Will hiring X and Y be good for ERI? Will moving this OU to this particular uh, director or this particular or fusing two OUs together be an enhancement of our power to do good or will it you know be uh, an obstacle and, uh, and a barrier so I did take that up that uh, that title mainly to um, post pose the question and, and hopefully people will ask it uh, as, as, we move, as we move on through our activities. What are the greatest challenges? It's still going to be, I think, how we operate with our partners. Uh, simply because having a hundred or so scientists on board will really be inadequate to respond to the multiple challenges that we face in rice 
uh, production globally. Um, considering the fact that we're probably dealing with 120 million different farmers and a hectare age of uh, oh, close to, what do you say, 150 or 200 million hectares? That's quite a big area to, to face. Not, not to mention the fact that you have insect and disease infestation, you have climate change, you have natural calamities taking place, you have civil disorders and strifes that will affect production. Um, our understanding of how to make our partners tick and how they will buy into the programs and how effectively they will use Iris inputs to fit what their national needs would be, I think, the greatest, the greatest challenge for us. I, I think we, we should continue to regard the value, the very high value that we put with our partners, uh, the national networks, the networks that we're now building with private sector, and that <coughs> it's our the role of senior management and even the board to make sure these are all being managed in a very balanced way.